Welcome to my darkroom. Today I'm going to try and develop color film. Some Coda Color 100 from 1988. I'll be using Cinestill Simplify Chemistry, their CS41. I'm actually pretty bad at developing color film and I'm not sure why. I've never had a problem developing black and white film, but I probably have something like a 70% success rate with color. 30% failure rate is pretty bad and I've thought that maybe I should give this up and just send my film off to a professional lab. I'm lucky to have a photo lab about uh, 30 minutes away, but they only do 35 millimeter in house. So my turnaround time there is about a week with an hour of driving. I could send my film off through the mail. That would save me the hour of driving. And the gas goes into shipping. A full service lab could also save me from having to scan my film. But I prefer the struggle uh, of learning through this process. So I just keep practicing development, hoping I eventually get better. It's a very long-winded way of saying, if you're here for definitive answers on developing color film at home, this may be the wrong video for you. But if you prefer to see the learning process, then this might be the right place. So if you're still here with me, let's get developing. The first step in the process is loading the film into the tank. There are many types of tanks, but today I'm going to be using a common Patterson Super System 4 tank. The film needs to be loaded into the tank in complete darkness. I could just shut off the lights here in the dark room and load the tank, but I prefer to use a changing bag. If nothing else, the bag keeps everything together and prevents anything from rolling on the floor. The tank, reel, film, inner lid, and tube all go into the changing bag. Go ahead and take the tape off of the roll before you put it into the bag. I should mention the importance of this little tube before it goes in. Without this tube, light would get into the tank and ruin the film. So make sure you don't forget it. If we were loading 35 millimeter film, I would also want to include scissors to cut the film from the canister. Okay, let's pretend my hands are in the darkness provided by a changing bag. For Patterson reels, I like to uncouple the 120 film from the backing paper and feed it into the reel tape side first. So I unroll the film like so. In the dark, I use my hands to find these big notches. That's where we're going to insert the film. Once the film is inserted, I leave my thumbs on the notches, put my fingers down here, and I ratchet the film on. With the film on the reel, the reel goes onto the tube and then both go inside the tank. Finally, the lid goes on top. Now we can open the changing bag. Color film chemistry is very straightforward. There's not really any room for creative choices. Just follow the C41 process. And Sinistil CS41 kit allows for an easy and e even easier two chemical process. The instruction card says there are six steps, but the last is to dry the film and three of the steps just used water. Somewhat confusingly, they all have different names, the pre-soak, the wash, and the rinse. To make it just slightly worse, I add another water step between the developer and Blix. In the past, I had some yellow streaking and a rinse uh, between the developer and Blix was recommended to me to solve that problem. So far, it seemed to have worked. So two chemical steps, four ways of adding water and then letting it dry. That's all it takes. When developing color film, it's important to maintain a consistent temperature. 
which is why I have a sous vide machine. This is the official Cinestill version. It's nice because it comes with a two-stage timer preset for developer and Blix. The Cinestill model is fine, but if I did it again, I would get a cheap sous vide machine and just use an external timer. That's especially true since I added a wash step between the developer and Blix. The short pause between the when the developer timer ends and the Blix timer begins is too short for my process. We're going to start the development process by pre-soaking our film with just some regular water. I'm pretty sure the main purpose here is to rehydrate the emulsion and to get it up to temperature. While we wait a minute for that to soak, let's set three and a half on the timer. With our minute up, we're going to drain the water and add in the developer. And today, I'm going to be using this handy device rather than doing manual inversions. Oh, and don't forget the timer. Since the tank is not being immersed in water when we're using the rotation device, we need to adjust the temperature a little bit. So instead of 102 degrees, we upped our temperature to 104 degrees. After the three and a half minutes of development is complete, I'm going to pour the developer back into the storage tank so that we can reuse it. I'm going to rinse the film with a little bit of water now. After letting the film soak in the water for, I don't know, about a minute, I'm going to drain the water off and then we're going to be ready for the blicks. And I almost forgot, I need to set my timer again. We'll put it back to rotate for eight minutes. If I was hand inverting, I would invert the tank for the first 10 seconds and then every 30 seconds up until the time is, is over. That's four inversions in 10 seconds. After eight minutes, the Blix step is complete. Again, I'm going to pour it back into a storage container for reuse. Next, we're going to use the water from our water bath to rinse the remaining fix off of the film. Finally, I need to do a rinse with something other than city water. My city water is quite hard, so instead I use water that's recaptured from the dehumidifier here. This helps prevent water spotting. All right, and here's our results. Uh, as you can maybe see, this expired film from 1988, uh, it's hard to see the images. We got a very strong blue on this side and a brown on this side, but there are faint images on there. So we will hang these up to dry and we will come back and check them tomorrow. The negatives are dry, so we can take a look at them. We can see the base on this negative has more of a 
blue or violet tint than the orange that you would expect. That's because the film expired in 1988. And in the right angle, you could see one side has a very strong blue cast and the other has the normal brown. For comparison, here is some unexpired Portrait 800. And here's how the final images look. Not great, but that is because of the film. The development went as well as could be expected. So, that's how I develop color film in my darkroom. Until next time.